it's been the hardest secret of my life. I have to tell you, <laughs> it's um, it's been really hard. I, I think that it's been even harder for my father, who is such a massive fan and and um, loves his Facebook. <laughs> like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, so it, it's yeah, it's. I'm excited to see what everybody thinks because she truly is so special and, and she's been such a pivotal character in this world and she's so important to to the story in Mandalorian um, and, and where it's going and um, I, I think it's important. She's important. I am Bo-Katan of Clan Kree's. I was born on Mandalore and fought in the Purge. I am the last of my line. Katie Sackoff, at the time that we're talking, the show has pretty much just premiered this episode. And so people are like reacting to it in real time. How do you feel right now? You know, it's pretty surreal, to be honest. Um, I've really tried to stay off social media because I have not seen the episode. So I'm really just trying to... Um, um, I don't know, not have a panic attack for the most part. You know, this character has been such a part of my life for so long and um, it is incredibly special and rare to have been able to actually be able to play her in live action. And, and um, um, so there's a lot of nerves that come along with that. So walk me through like, when did you find out this was happening? You get this call or conversation with Dave or John and they're like, not only do we want to put Bo-Katan in the show, you are going to be playing her. We want you to play her. It was such a surreal moment. You know, it's, um, I would have to go back and look at my tweets because I actually tweeted, this has been like the biggest day of my entire career. Mm. Um, you know, my dad raised me on, on sci-fi and, and Star Wars and so, um, it, this is like a dream come true. Playing her in Clone Wars and Rebels was a dream come true. This is insane. Um, but I, you know, when Mandalorian, when the news of the Mandalorian came out, um, I sort of thought to myself in the back of my mind, you you never know. Um, I knew that it probably wouldn't happen. Fan castings never happened. Um, and so I, I sort of slyly mentioned it to Dave Filoni when I saw him at, at one point. And he was like, well, you never know when his cheeky little way that he does it. And then when I got a phone call that to sit down um, with John Favreau, I, I think my brain exploded. Um, and I sat down sort of thinking that I was gonna take this meeting and and really have to like jump through hoops. And I walked in and, and it was, it was pretty surreal. He was like, do you want to do this? And I was like, I don't even, I didn't even know how to answer the question. Of course I wanted to do it. I was such a huge fan of the show. And then this is pretty, pretty amazing. I know this is kind of a big question, but what does Bo-Katan mean to you? You have been playing her for such a long time. Like what does she mean to you out of all the characters that you've played? I have said for the longest time that I would have played a rock in Star Wars just to be part of the world. I said that I think from the beginning of my career. Um, and so when, when Bo-Katan came around, it was, it was just an opportunity to exist in the world and to really just live out a childhood fantasy and imagination. And, and over the years, she's become very important to not only myself, because I played her for so long and, and I've really seen her grow up uh, as a character. Um, and, and she just means a lot to me. You know, she's been the character I've played the longest. And, um, um, it was really interesting translating her onto live action. It was it was pretty crazy. So the first day that you, I don't know if you're doing like a test or whatever, like the first time you see yourself in the full live action Bo-Katan look, what was that like? Was it emotional? How did you feel? I did cry. <laughs> um, I How did, did you not? <laughs> yeah, uh, Dave Dave was there, Filoni, and, and he just, he he and I were both just, blown away she she looked so much like the Bo-Katan that we had come to know and love um and they did such a brilliant job with her that um I I think we were both just it was very surreal it was really surreal um it it sort of felt like the culmination of a 25 year career where I've been working so hard and and to actually have this moment that that seems so much bigger than anything that I could imagine um blew my mind We've seen like the animated version for so long. Was there something that was really important for you to be like, I want to get this part right in the live action version? <laughs> you know, it might seem really crazy, but Bo-Katan has a scar on her face. Um, 
And I was really attached to that. I was really attached to her freckles. I was really attached to how her eyebrows point down um, in just the weirdest way where it was finding the animated version of it, which is a bit cartoonish in the sense that they go down such at such a point and then finding and translating that into a real person and, and making sure that it didn't look cartoonish um, was really fun. I had such a great time um, in the, the makeup chair figuring out her look, but I really just wanted her to be everything that fans of the Clone Wars and Rebels wanted her to be. Mm -hmm. In every sense of the way, I, I wanted to make sure that she moved the way that she did in Rebels, that that she, you know, that she had all of all of who Bo-Katan was, baggage and all, um, in the way that she carried herself. Well, because there is like, there's so much time unaccounted for, and now we have so many more questions. So, I mean, how, what would you say has been the biggest change in her since the last time we saw her? Because she does seem a little different. Like, obviously, she really wants something back. So, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that there is a little piece of Bo-Katan that I don't think you see coming. She's got something else going on in her mind. And she is very... Um, uh, Everything she does is purposeful. Um, and I think that that is new for her. Mm. Um, you know, she's she's grown into the role of a leader. Um, and I think she finally believes that that she is that leader. Um, but there is, there is an ego that comes with that with her um, that may or may not um, work against her. So season one of The Mandalorian, when you're watching it and there's all these like sad realizations about the state of The Mandalorians, how did you feel watching that unfold? You know, I know the story so well now that there is a part of me that feels, this is gonna sound so crazy. There's a part of me that feels like a Mandalorian. Like I've lived this story for so long. I feel the pain of, of you know, Mandalore and, and the home world and this struggle, um, and I, 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 I have lived her so long that it, it does feel quite emotional for me when I hear about the the state of things. Not only that, and then you see Moff Gideon bust in through a Tie Fighter with your dark saber. I know. I was like screaming at the TV when I saw that. I was like, he doesn't even look good holding it. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> when you saw that, were you worried about? Bo-Katan's fate? Because there was a lot of theories that maybe Moff Gideon killed her in a battle or something. I know, there are a lot of theories. And you know what? We, there is a story there and we will find out, but I would hate to ruin it for anyone. Okay, good to know. Because I'm like, if she's one and done, I'm out of here. No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see. I would, you know, as a fan of the show, I hate spoilers. And so that is also, that has been the thing that's kept me really good on social media, to be honest, is that I didn't want to ruin it for anyone. You know, there is, there is teasing something and then there is ruining it for people. And I really wanted to, um, to make sure that I, I kept it exciting for them. And I wanted them to live that moment for the first time when they see her and, and, and have it be everything that they wanted it to be for 15 years. So did you have questions for for Dave and John about like, where where has she been? What has she been up to? Where's my dark saber? <laughs> I had so many questions and, and I still do. I could talk about Star Wars till the cows come home. And luckily so could my fiance. And so he actually, you know, I really wanted to see how Bo-Katan fit into this world. And it, it took a lot of conversations and a lot of understanding timelines. Mm -hmm. um, and that meant talking to Dave um, and John quite a bit, actually. So um, Dave Filoni is one of the best people to talk to about this world, though, because he knows it so well. I think he, you know, eats, sleeps, and breathes uh, these characters. So um, yeah, it's it's been really fun. And, and especially when we were trying to figure out who Bo was, you know, the three of us would really powwow and, and figure out, well, would she say this? Would she walk like this? What would she do? What, you know, if, because we know this happened, what is that, 
it, do we sense that in her voice in this moment? Because that mm -hmm. happened eight years ago. So it's really pulling from a vast amount of source material because she's been around for so long. I did love hearing her very sarcastically say this is the way. <laughs> You're changing the terms of the deal. This is the way. I don't know which version of that they actually kept. So I don't think I've said this is the way more times um, in my entire life. I think I said it many, many times <laughs> that day, trying to, you know, give options. Like, what was she thinking? What is she planning? Where, you know, what does she want? Um, and we'll just all have to wait and find out. What's one thing that you hope is answered through The Mandalorian about her story? Oh my gosh, so much, so much. I think just like the fans, I want to know, I want to know what happened with that dark saber. Yeah, that's you know, the I one. That's and I the wanna, one. I want to know if she's gonna get it back. So if she, she has to, right? <laughs> I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Bo-Katan lays it out there, though. She's like, um, go after. There's a person named Ahsoka Katana out there. Well, not a person. There's someone named Ahsoka Katana out there. Um, and there are rumors that Rosario Dawson is playing Ahsoka Tano. What did you think of that casting when you heard that? I honestly don't know anything about it. it. You know, there's so many fan casts and so many rumors surrounding The Mandalorian that some of them are true, some of them aren't. So I have no idea. You know, I've never met Rosario, so I don't know anything about it. I love the character from Clone Wars and Rebels, so I would love to see her. I would love to see those two reunite. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of history with those two. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of story there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of camaraderie and and respect, but there's also a lot of um, a, a lot of pain and and um, distrust and and so we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens. I'm so excited if you know if she does show up. Well, we know she does show up. I do, I say as much. Since there is so much like unexplored time for Bo Katan, like my thought immediately went to like. Now that we've seen you live action, I'm like, I want, I want a spinoff. Would you be interested in that? I mean, I mean, who wouldn't, right? You know. I mean, come on. That's what's so great about the Star Wars universe is there's so many different places to go off and, and find. There's, there's so many stories and so many interesting characters to go after that, that, you know, um, I, you know, I have no idea, but I would love to play this character as, as long as she she has a story. There are a lot of Clone Wars characters that are, and, and Rebels characters that are out and about in the universe somewhere, but we just don't, we haven't seen them yet. So if you could pluck one to show up alongside of you in The Mandalorian, like who would you want to manifest? Oh my God. I do love the character of Sabine. Mm. Um, you know, I would also love to see what Bo-Katan's life was like with Satine, her sister, and what it was like, you know, losing her sister the way that she did. And and um, for anyone that doesn't know that, you need to go watch Clone Wars and Rebels. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, her life with Obi-Wan and things like that, I would love to know what happened with all of that and how that actually impacted uh, Bo-Katan as a leader. There are quite a few episodes left. So do you think we could see Bo-Katan coming back um, this season? You know, I wouldn't want to spoil anything. You'll just have to watch it. Okay, I guess I will watch it. <laughs> I mean, since you're gonna do it anyway. What do you think of Baby Yoda? Can, I can't. I, I know. Can't Baby Yoda. Like, honestly, it, it's so amazing to me what they do with his facial expressions. Um, you know, and, and how many people it takes to control different pieces of him. And the fact that they actually listen you know, he's mic'd and I'm mic'd and they're, they're listening to me talk to him. There was such a funny little scene where it wasn't even a scene. I was just sitting there between sets and baby is sitting next to me. And we just had started having a conversation. The guys operating him started reacting because they heard me talking to him. Like I was talking to him like he was real. And so then they started reacting. And I had an entire conversation with Baby where his, in all his reactions, he was moving his head. Mm -hmm. And I asked him if he could, I, 
to show me his angry face. I wanted to see baby's angry face, you know, does baby get angry? And he really tried and he couldn't do it. And then he finally did it and he looked like a gremlin. It was the <laughs> funniest thing I've ever seen. He looked like, do not give them water or food after midnight. <laughs> he went evil and I was like, baby, it's crazy. Oh my God. Well, congratulations. Um, this has been so amazing. It's been so amazing to watch. And I really, really hope you get your dark saber back. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice? It really compliments her ensemble. Yes. Like, and oh. as a Star Wars fan, you deserve to be holding that live action dark saber to at least see what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. At some point, you know, it's it would be nice. It's It's like your own bounce board. It just, it lights up, you glow a little bit. I, I think that it would, you know, I think it would look very good in her hands, but you never know. I, you never know what's gonna happen. So we'll just have to wait and see.